it's Sarah. And as you can see, I am working on the tissue box. So what you're about to see is the tutorial that got me to this point. But I cut out a bit, about eight minutes in the beginning, because I was just fumbling around looking for the papers I wanted to use. Um, so I figured I'd do a different, um, I'd just start off differently and just tell you that I used all jelly prints for this. But you can use pattern paper. You can use any type of collage papers that you want. And um, make it your own. You know, you can change anything you want to change. You can use what I'm trying to do here. I still have matte medium stuck to me, and I took a shower this morning. <laughs> I had matte medium all over me. Um, so what you what you don't see is me cutting the background papers. That's all you don't see me doing. So basically, I left uh, about an eighth of an inch, probably um, the it's not quite five inches long wide. I mean, so all I do is just measure, just eyeball it, and I leave a little smidge, like about an eighth of an inch on each side. Now, the other thing you'll notice is I haven't used anything, I haven't put black on my, on my corners yet, and I may and I may not, I'm not sure. The way this turned out, I'm just really liking it with the, the light color, so maybe I'll do gold, or I'm not sure, or just brown, I may not do black. But, when I outline everything with black, and I'm sorry if I'm yelling, I'm just pretty, I'm awake. Um, <laughs> uh, when I outline everything, it may call for black, we'll see. And I think it would look great with black anyway. So as you can see, I've chosen the cat, uh, the bee scap, the sun, and the bird. So I hope you enjoy this. This is part one. Um, I am about to film the shading part of this. So um, I will see you later. Enjoy. I'm gonna take I should have a paper plate around here. I don't. So you know what? I'm just going to use this. This is my paper palette. Palette paper. And some matte medium. And an old brush. I have my water bucket here. I have all my grungy brushes over here. And put some matte medium down. I also use um, a piece of deli paper to just put the to apply the matte medium to the back of the of the pattern paper because that way I don't get adhesive everywhere. So I just take a piece of this and just put this Yeah, so make sure you cut it right because with the, well, with jelly prints anyway, you only get one shot because that you only usually have one piece of paper to use. And I am centering it with about, there's about an eighth of an inch on each edge. And then just put a little coat of matte medium on top. And that should seal the piece so that's why I'm not bothering with any gesso or anything this medium is you know once it dries it becomes a seal and I'm going to I've been briaring this paper this paper I use um, cardstock and it's stiff and it buckled on me when I did my houses project it buckled so that looks really flat right now I'm gonna go ahead and do the next section and this is going to be the opposite piece. See how there's like, it's buckling. Um, just put a little bit on there. But this will seal the paper and give it a non-porous surface. So I'm going to take the green, put some on the back of here. Do you guys like my camera up higher? 
I don't know. It's pretty high up there. I haven't. I have to watch the video and see what it looks like um, when I post it. But I'll zoom in when I do the details on certain things. But for this stuff, I kind of like that it's up higher and you can really see the whole process. So that's pretty flat. I like using my finger to kind of push it down to the surface. And then it's fun to peel the, the glue off your fingers when it dries. I'm going to make sure it's all adhered this side yeah that looks good there's no buckling so I think on the canvas it might have been too like flexible of a surface for it to so that's good put a little on here oops I didn't mean to double now we're just gonna go straight blue I'm going to have to get, I think there's an AC Moore 55% off coupon, and that's the greatest time to go get these heavier, I mean, these um, more expensive products, like this medium, um, this Liquitex Matte Medium. So I will um, probably have to venture out. It's very cold here in New Jersey, and um, I do need a few things. Like I ran out of... Um, cardstock today and um, so I I think I might want to try the um, Staples brand though that's what a lot of people like to do jelly printing on so I might get a, a thing of that um, what else do I need I think I ran out I'm running out of paint um, I need just the basic colors so we'll see but um, if we're going to get a snowstorm you know it's always nice to have to be stocked up so see that's a little not adhering. So I just want to make sure. Push it down really nice. It looks pretty already. Just having that on there. So then this is my last piece. Oops, first I gotta put it on here. And I, I'm working on my um, old cutting mat because uh, I have a nice new one, but I'm not going to mess it up. So I just decided to use this and let it get dirty, like not worry about it. Because I used to try and protect it at first, and then once it gets stuff on it, I just kind of gave up and buy a new one. But I'm going to use it for... For this type of stuff where I'm painting and getting messy. Let me just try to get all this. So yeah, we're going to do the cap first. So I'm going to gather up anything that I think uh, I'm going to need for that. And I'm not going to make a template I'm going to do it my own way. And this is kind of busy, but I think it's going to be fine because I chose to have this busier background to kind of make it look like there's trees all around it and stuff. I love it. What should I use for the top? Um, the top is going to be four, no, four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. 
Should I use this one that I messed up? Yeah, I think I'm going to use that. Let's see if this what this measurement is. I think it was four and three quarters. And then I'm just going to trace. I don't know how I'm going to get it to be centered though. I could just tack it down. I'm going to just tack it down with, oopsie, try and get this to work. Yeah, there we go. Just tack it down with this, and then I'm going to flip it over, and uh, i got to trim it a little bit. Yeah. And that way I'll be able to trace the hole. I think it was like four and three quarters. I'm just going to take my pencil and go around the hole, peel it off. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to use scissors. I'm just going to make a little X and actually cut out a little hole in the middle. But I like to, I'll cut it with scissors and then I can go a tad in. So I want it to be, have that little eighth of an inch showing on the rim too. So hopefully this will be close enough. So I'm just cutting around that around the line I made, not right on it. Cutting over tape. Put some matte medium on that. Oh, geez. It is really fluid. So, whoop, I'm dripping inside. That was a mess. I want to do another one of these and make it just like abstract, I think. I don't know. i got to come up with something. I'm really enjoying this uh, type of project at the moment. So, and I have another one of these um, tissue boxes. of paper. Just got to get some more medium, matte medium. And see this has a little buckle in it right here. So I'm just going to push down, go around and make sure everything's on there. It looks good. Okay. So that's that. I'm going to set that aside to dry. And where did I put that? Just going to wipe the matte medium off my palette paper. Because you can do that. It's got a waxy finish. And I'll move it over here for a sec. Then we have to figure out what um, 
diapers to use for uh, I really think a, a pink cat could be super cute um, I haven't done a pink cat before I did gray cats uh, I have a cool paper that's kind of pink and gray maybe I'll dig that out all right I have this is going to be for the moon and it's for you know what I should do make a template I'm going to make a template um just with plain paper Um, four, is anything dry on here yet? Not really. I just need the basic shape so I can get a, uh, and you guys can't see that, but I'm going to do a moon, uh, You know what a great way to do a moon too? Like if you have a round circle, just trace half of it. You know what I mean? Like that, that's a little small, but basically that's a great way to make your moon. And you want your cat to have a place to sit. So don't make your moon too. It should be covering this part. I'm gonna use my dark pencil. Where's my dark pencil? Maybe I'll just use magic marker because, uh, here it is, extra black. Um, so make the moon go all the way over to here and then keep this part kind of skinnier so you have room for your cat right in here so you don't need this and actually I should have done this on a um but I like the shape of that you can come up a little higher and kind of go a little flatter here so that he has a place to sit so I like that I like that shape it's going to cover well it might be actually a little big because I want it to be a little smaller so I'm going to come in and just peek that there and maybe end it right here too so he can come like that and you can just fudge with this until you like your shape and then you're going to use it as a template. Decide which way you want your moon to face on your piece. And I'm going to face it this way on the piece. So when I trace it, make sure your, you know, your tracing is able to, I'll show you what I mean. Um, then my cat is going to go somewhere in here. So for example, I'm not going to use this one, but you just want to make sure you have, so he's going to be, it's just a triangle and a circle. So that's your cat. You just need room, and then his little tail is going to kind of come down like that, and his legs go like that, all right? So he just needs to sit on the moon in there. So I think I have enough room, and so I'm going to cut this out and make a template. I should have done it on like a stiffer paper. Like use cardstock and then you'll be able to use it as a template um, better than this flimsy old paper. Or you know what, if you wanted to make another one you could just do it on um, a file folder and then you'd have it, you could just save it. I kind of like when it gets thinner at the top, 
But see, this is just your template, so you don't, it's not cut in stone yet. You don't have to worry about it. But I like it when it gets thicker and then it really thins out. So I'm getting thinner, much thinner than I had it. I like that. And then he's going to sit right here. I kind of think I should even, no, because he'll just sit on there, he'll go over it, so that's good. So let's see if it'll fit on here. It's a little big, I think, and it's going to take up the whole side. I mean, it could be cute. I think it. I might do that, have it take up the whole side. Um, actually, his tail isn't going to be able to come down, so you're going to have it going up. It'll go up. Um, or it could go up this way. Actually, that would look cute if it kind of came over and wrapped or twirled over there. And you can have your, like, like that and kind of end it there. It could just be, you know, I like that shape too. All right, and then we need our cat. So for the cat, I am going to grab a piece of cardstock. I don't really have cardstock at the moment because I just used it all up. Um, it's okay, Kirby. I have this. So for the kitty cat, I'm going to try and like just use this as my guide for size-wise. I really like it like that. So I think I might end up Cutting this off. I like it like that. I don't know why. And so my cat's gonna go actually he needs a much thinner neck. I forgot what I was doing. All right, but he's just going to be about like this tall. And we're going to turn this into a cat. So his neck, definitely need a neck. And not, you know, and then it's just kind of a um, triangle. This is all you have to do. You can give him shoulders and make his legs come down like this, his front paws. And that's all I did. And when I did my, um, my piece over here, wait, let me see. I kind of just went like that. Mm, he's got, let's see. I don't know how I did it. I'm going to do the head. And you can give them a tall head or a wide head or whatever shape head you want. But that's basically it. Um, and he has, you could round his back a little more instead of being a triangle shape. And if you want to make his front paws a different color, then you're going to cut this out too to make... Um, that part of the template, but let me give him a neck, a little neck, and then shoulders. So this part here could be another color of paper, and you can have, um, I like that, kind of looks like his head's a little bit small, maybe I'll make it a little bigger. And that way it gives you more room to put your face on. So you have more room to put the details, right? So I kind of like that shape. His little nose and his eyes. I'm just making sure I have enough room. This is probably the smallest one I've done because the, the one in the, my art journal is even a little... That's 
pretty good. He fits. I like it. I'm not sure if I should have cut it that much now. All right, so and so he could be a little taller. I like him that size. All right, so I'm going to cut this out. I don't like him. So, for those of you who have dies and stamps of a little cat or any of the tools of the trade that'll make you feel um, better. You know what, you can cut his head off and you can put it on an angle like I did for um, my little one on uh, my, the last one I made. I put his head on an angle and that was really kind of cute. You can also cut his tail off and use another color like of, I might do that. I am, I'm gonna cut his tail off. And anyway, I was saying, cut his head off, and then you can use it and put it in a different position. And you know, I don't do my best work on camera. I never do my best work in a class either. Rarely. Can't say never say never. But... I'm just doing this as a tutorial for you guys and I might tweak stuff um, behind the scenes a little bit if I don't love something but I'm just giving you guys the real time creation creative process and then you know so there's his tail I think I am going to make a separate um, legs a different color paper is all I mean and there's his little head but so you can turn it on an angle you can make his neck a little longer and that way you have you can um, tack it down so when I cut it out I'll actually but that looks cute right can you Sam all right so that's that I think I'm going to make this template out of um, this paper too and I'm going to do it, I'm going to change the shape a little bit. So I'm going to go away and come back when I have, I'm going to show you how I trace this onto the, um, well you know what, let's go ahead and do the, the moon. I'm not, I'll just tweak it. I just want to make sure my moon, I want this paper here and I might use this for, uh, something else. What was I going to use this for? So that's why I wanted to make sure I, oh, um, no, I think I'm just, oh, stars. I wanted to have a couple of stars. I might put some stars. Mm. Think, oh man. Think I have enough. right there. But I kind of want to see if I can have more. And only I'm only doing this because um, I really want to do it on this side. And I want to make sure that I am going in the right direction. Um, Definitely would have been better if it was cardstock. But I'm managing. And I'll tweak the shape once I get it down here because um, this is just basically the size. Giving me the size I need. So there it is. And so yeah, I'm going to tweak that. So that'll be my moon. And then I got to get a cat. And I kind of really do want to do it in this pink color. Um, 
I don't know. Maybe in the B step color. That's kind of a cool color for a cat. And he's going to go on this side. B step and the bird. And then this is the sun. All right, I'll be right back. I have chosen this for my cat. I'm thinking it's going to be cool. Um, I'm going to trace a little bit taller. Let's see what colors I like. I think I'm going to do them right in this corner. But I want to do them a little taller. So I'm going to leave some room and then I can fudge it. And I'm going to make his neck taller too. So, um... There is no, you know, set thing you have to do. But I want room to glue his head on. That's why I'm doing that. And I just want room to see if he could be taller. And if, he, if I can make him taller, I'll make him taller. And that's it. His head, so I'm just going to kind of even make him a little wider. I don't like those scissors. And then this can all be tweaked as you go. Now he has a nice long neck that I can yeah I like them taller. I think I want to put a star on there though, but I might center him just like that. And let's see if his head goes to the side. His body is definitely taller now, so I don't know if his head looks right. And his tail can go like that. I'll put it where it goes like that. I think his head needs to be a little bigger too. And this is looking very similar to the moon color. So I think I'm going to give him pink legs and pink tail. And that'll kind of, you know, change it a little. And I'll shade them with pinks and I'll shade this with brownish yellows. And But his head needs to be a tiny bit chubbier. So I'm going to go over here and try and fit this on here. I'm going to give him a little bit bigger head. So just go wider. And is that good? Maybe even a little taller. Give him a chin. That's a big chin. I have a big chin looks like me. So, it's a little too big. Alright, I'm going for that. And again, use your stamps. Use, you can use a cat picture from a magazine, from your cat food label. I don't know. Anything you want to. But I'm using jelly prints. It's just what I'm going to do. So there's my little cat's head. And then I'm going to do his legs in pink. See, that looks more proportionate. I like that better. Um, his little legs are going to be in pink. And his tail is going to be in pink. So I'm just going to kind of trace actually I don't need my tracing anymore because it's not accurate but I'm going to use pink so I wanted to find is this yeah right around here right here going to kind of do this all at one time and then it'll be easier to work on the piece because we won't be using Mod Podge any or Mod Podge which you're welcome to use Mod Podge 
but we won't be doing that. We'll be just using different things. I'll pull out different mediums. So right now, anywho, um, pink. Where was that piece of pink? Right here. I think I'm going to do, make his legs. So I'm just flipping it over. Trace this out. Really don't need the neck, but I just need legs. So let me think how I want to, I want to do it similar to this. See how his legs kind of are just like, whoop, whoop. I like that. And it was easy to cut them out separately. So that's what I'm going to go for. Um, so just kind of, here's the center. So you can't see what I'm doing anyway. And I'm just going to connect one arm to there. Maybe I'll connect them. And oh, I don't like that. Mm. I kind of like her technique better. Because you can make them separate. I like that. It looks a little wonky. And I think I'll be able to adjust it. And then I kind of give them feet. Like, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'll be. So I guess my battery died, but I got my cat all cut out and um, decided to go with some pink and orange just because that's whimsy. What can I tell you? I'm going to do a star too, but I want to show you what we're going to do for, um, I'm going to put these in this little jar or whatever it is. I'm going to do my sun and all I'm going to use is, this is a two and a half inch punch. But you could just use a little thing like this, draw a circle around it, any circular thing you have. I'm going to pick, uh, I want this part over here, I don't know, no, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of cool. That's right there. I think two and a half is plenty because then we're going to cover it with um, the rays. The rays are just going to cover the whole thing. So I'm going to use the same paper. I th ouch! I think I could use something with a little more orange in it, like fiery, right? Maybe make some of them this color and some of them that color. I think that could be cool, right? Or all this color. And this is actually done on... Um, copy paper, not, um, this is cardstock. So this is my son. Where did my template go again for, did I have it on my book, my bookie book? Yeah, right here. So here's my son. And I want to make rays. And I just, I've really been not measuring and anything like that, but, you know, just start cutting. I think about up to here. I like to make different sizes. Just start cutting them out. So I already cut the edge off this paper, although I don't like that. So that's, I'm going to start here and just start making rays. 
They can be thick at the bottom, thin at the bottom, squiggly. Ooh, that would be cool. <gasps> See, you could make them like this. That looks cool, doesn't it? Oh, let me see if I can do it again. It looks pretty cool, but how am I going to do bigger, um, smaller ones? I like it. Oh, I don't like that. Actually, I went over that and it got off. So let's cut these out. I'll cut them out. So basically that's what you're going to do. I'm going to try the squigglies this time. I haven't done it before. But you need to make sure that you have long enough ones. I like them to kind of either touch the edge or go past the edge so you fill the whole space. So that's going to be for our sun. So I'll come back when I have them cut out. Alright, I have my cat on. He's kind of sitting, you know, I'll have to give him, you know, whatever. But here's my son. I adhered it, and I cut a bunch of um, rays, and I went with two colors of paper. I kind of laid them out so I remember what went, what went where while I, I went every other. So I think I'm going to just start with these. And I, th I kind of cut the end of the paper into a, a U shape so that it like I'm just going to use um, a little bit of a smaller brush sorry sometimes it's uh, I'm using that ginormous brush ginormous I have so many Ugh, these brushes okay but um, get what I was saying all right, let's just start. I think I kind of want him to go here. I cut little U shapes, that's what I was saying, so that it like kind of butts up against it. But I'm gonna outline everything with um, black Posca paint pen anyway. So even if it doesn't fit exactly, it, it'll, be, it'll be close enough. And I'm gonna cut the little ends here that go too far with um, my X-Acto knife. Yeah, I kind of regret that I didn't. See, I should have put it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Just stop being so fussy. It's going to be cute regardless. I didn't even. This is pa um, printer paper. So this isn't even a uh, cardstock it's a lot thinner but I think I still think you need to put it on the back and the front of the paper that's why I have this little piece of deli paper I know I'm, I'm repeating myself now and before I get too far ahead of myself I want to cut the because um, it'll start to stick where I can't pull it off. And I want it to be uh, even with the blue paper. So that I just cut out a bunch of one this color and a bunch of that color and just started placing them here and there until I saw that I liked it like that and and then you just that's what you go with and it, the matte medium just takes a minute but it is sticking it is working so I'm gonna get more of that now I'm just gonna get my exacto knife and because this is a brand new blade so I can really make sure that I oops it makes a nice sharp cut or you could just before you glue it down just use your scissors and eyeball it and it's fine either way and there we go so I, I, I mean I kinda kept that point that's good enough for me 
So let's see. Oh, let me make sure I get this end on here. Make sure everything's sticking down. And I, I'm happy that I tried something different and went with a swirly um, ray instead of the straight rays. Because sometimes, you know, I forget. I get in auto autopilot and just don't think about it. And next thing you know, I have all straight rays. When you can always switch it up. Do whatever floats your boat. I like that um, I'm not minding the way the um, printer paper is to, to work with, actually. It's, it's easy to adhere. It's, it's, it goes down easier. So, I mean, there is that. It takes the paint really nice, too. So, I mean, actually, there's nothing not to like. Um, that's kind of... I need a dark one over here. So, we'll do you next I mean and you get the point but that's going to be different than my other son so like it I like it I only need little pieces I think I'm going to um Put a star on the other um, with the cat. I think I want to do that. All right, I like that. So I'll be back when this is all adhered, and I'm going to continue to put paper on the piece. So I think I'm going to put the bee skep and a branch for my bird and a bird, and get that on there so we know where we're going. Then the next step we'll do. You know, it'll be anyway. All right. I know I'm not talking right this video, but all right. Thanks. I mean, I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> so I have my sun, and I have my moon and my cat, and I might put a star, oh, there's a little sticky boogie, I don't know, I don't think I need a star, but I could still put a star, uh, maybe I'll put a couple stars up top or something, but I need to do my bee step and my branch with a bird. So I'm going to do that in another part. So for now, that's it. And thanks for watching.